Dr. Pritchard, good evening, welcome. Now, we're in a double celebration mode tonight, 15 years of Baxter Novum, but there is another important anniversary that pops to our mind, and you know all about it, don't you? We are celebrating a year of the 30th anniversary of the, I would say, widespread clinical application of home peritoneal dialysis. And you were there in the pioneering times? Um, yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I think when you think about the birth of PD as we know it today, it really goes back to Moncrief and Popovich, and they first reported what was called equilibration peritoneal dialysis in 76 in the journal for the ASIO. Uh, but its real clinical application did happen in Canada. Okay. Good yeah. place. Well, well, you're in Stockholm. Be yeah. careful. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud to be uh -huh. Canadian. And, and it was in Canada that with Dimitri Ariopoulos, who really I think is the, the pioneer of the widespread application of home PD, he was in Toronto, uh, partnered with Baxter to put the peritoneal dialysis fluids into plastic bags, which allowed patients to go home mm -hmm. and uh, have it as an ambulatory uh, therapy. And my first exposure to it was a lecture that was given not by Dimitri, but one of his fellows who was in Montreal in 1978. And he showed a picture of a gentleman who was driving his truck. He was a truck driver, so he used to drive across Canada, which is a big country. So he couldn't get a hemodialysis unit regularly. So Dimitri had offered him uh, what we now call, what we call CAPD. And there was a picture of this gentleman in the truck with his bag hanging from the mirror of his, his truck doing his exchange um, at, at a pit stop. I'm not sure it's something we would necessarily promote today, yeah. but I was very taken by it and I thought, wow, that's interesting. It was a revolution. And at the so time. then I got interested and that's, I started shortly thereafter. Mm -hmm. Now you must get some critical questions sometimes about Baxter Novum being the industry connected to the, the scientific work. Is there mm -hmm. a tension or is it a happy marriage? I think in general, there's a tension uh, in, in the medical community in general and the academic community between the legitimacy of uh, science within an industry environment and science within the academic environment. Um, but it's a healthy tension, but I think nephrology has been a discipline where as much as any discipline in the world, there's been a relationship between industry and academia and the clinical community that has allowed the discipline to move forward and that the industry needs the clinical community and the academic community to develop the science and apply the therapies, but the patients and the academic community and the clinical community needs industry to actually do the innovation. So it's a, it's a marriage that has its tensions, but it's a, um, an, a marriage that is of necessity to some extent, I would say. Uh, and it's a, but overall a happy marriage. I think Baxter Novum is certainly a very happy marriage. Okay, and what's the next challenge in, in, in Baxter Novum from a Baxter point of view? To produce great science, to teach us about yeah, renal disease, renal failure and its application and to give us insights that will allow us to make the lives of patients better. Thank you very much. Good luck with that, Dr. Sarah Pritchard. Thank you. Thank you. Now, if you're out there helping patients, looking for new inspiration in your own work, think Baxter Novum. Thank you for watching. And it has worked absolutely fantastic and uh, with very few or no friction. Our measure of success is how good is the quality of the science. So that's why we're excited about Baxter Noble. The people here are, they are very nice, very friendly and always very helpful, that's true.